Fantastic Forum panelist Martin Bosworth passed away suddenly on February 17, 2010. Martin was a man of great character and tremendous personal integrity. His death is a tragedy to his family, friends, colleagues, and the world at large, which is much poorer for his passing. Martin was one of those rare individuals who had the ability to connect with others. He profoundly touched the lives of everyone with whom he interacted. His passing creates a void that those of us who knew him are challenged to find some way to fill. Martin was a crusader in the truest sense of the word. His sense of empathy caused him to be genuinely concerned about people. He cared about and fought for social justice. He had an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and information, and he had a zest for life which he lived with great passion. He was funny, spontaneous, and never took himself too seriously. And although he was tremendously intelligent, he never flaunted it or spoke down to anyone. He treated everyone as his intellectual equal. We never spoke about spirituality, and I'm ashamed to say that I don't know what his spiritual beliefs were. I believe that death is a transition from one state of being to another, and that the energy of life cannot be destroyed. Martin is still with us, although he speaks to us now through other means. The gentle breeze of the wind, the way sunlight feels when it touches our skin, that little shiver down our backs. A spirit powerful as Martin's cannot be extinguished. He was my friend, and he always will be. the DC Fantastic Forum. I forgot what I was going to say. Because <laughs> my brain is battling. <laughs> this is the only show that is totally like a roller coaster while standing still. <laughs> or more like a Star Trek episode. Definitely like a Star Trek, Star Trek episode. Matter of fact. <laughs> the internet. The final frontier. These are the voyages of me, half Kirk, half Uhuru. And 100% awesome. Okay. Exactly. I am awesome. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm not made of awesome, though. I would disagree no, with that. Me, yeah, PJ's made of awesome. <laughs> so if we're doing Star Trek, can I be Khan's Lost One song? Yeah, you could be half Kirk, half Khan. Okay. <laughs> or you could be half Kirk, half unknown Latin ensign. Yeah, because there were so many there were Latinos in Star Trek, so that would be cool. Mm -hmm. You're like the Lana Torres, except you're, you know, not, not a woman and not a Klingon. Well, so. true. So, you go. so you got really that going like for you. And so not, not like her at all, like her at all except yeah. completely like her. Yes. By the way, it's nice to be back from exile. I mean, after that comment I said the last time, I'm, I'm glad I'm back. And you know, the only thing sillier than that opening <laughs> was the money spent on Countdown. Which Ooh. segues nicely into today's topic. I oh, got yes, it. And it the topic is on this nice little small cue card. And it says right here, but don't zoom in on it, 20 ways your countdown money could have been better spent. <sighs> I've been waiting for this. Yeah. Number 20. Go ahead. Who's got one? Well, as, as you all know, <laughs> countdown went on for 52 long weeks and you paid $3 for it. Each issue. So you spent about $156 on it. One of the things you could have bought with this $156, the uh, Jack Kirby OMAC Omnibus. Oh. That book just came out last week. It has issue. all 12 issues, I think it's 12 issues, of Jack Kirby's OMAC, the greatest character of all time. Yes. Thank you, wizard. So, <laughs> Got you could have you could have bought two 60 gig like freaking iPods for the cost of what it you know, but how can one measure the cost of 52 weeks of your life sucked away by countdown? Even if you found a way to re recompensate yourself for the money you lost, think of the time that you're never going to get back. Brain reading cells. Brain cells. They friends who friends yeah. who left you behind. 
your wife left you, you lost your mortgage, you know, because you were reading Countdown. You can never get that back, Shireen. It's kind of like a country book. music award. No, it's kind of like a crack <laughs> addict saying, it's going, I'm going to get better, I'm going to get better, it's going to get better, the next issue is going to be better. No. Oh, it sucks. Oh my God, it's going to get better. Okay. okay. And I, on, I've never done heroin on, myself, but, but I'm told that, like, you have to get more and more of it, you know, every time, because the high just doesn't, is shorter and shorter. <laughs> That's what Countdown was like for these people. Yeah, every time they're like, please, let it be good, let it be good, let it be good. It's like, no, it There's just clearly sucks. some crackhead logic going on. The <laughs> dust logic, <laughs> totally. And it's like, the comic book stops, every time you buy it, it's like, you should open the first page and you get a slap on the face because you're stupid enough to pick it and you go next week, pick another one and you should get slapped on the face again because you keep coming back and back and back. There should be like a punishment. disclaimer at the beginning of the book saying your retirement account is going to be $156 lighter because you bought this freaking crappy book for 52 weeks. You'll be How does that make you feel? You'll be suffering battered woman syndrome if you actually get <laughs> this You could also <laughs> buy, another thing you could also buy, the entire discography of Ghostface Killer. <laughs> for, th for those Wu of you watching, we would just like to tell you a story about Roberto because we like it. <laughs> One day we were at our local comic book oh store God. discussing <laughs> Ghostface Killer because we love hip hop. I'm saying so we're gonna put this somewhere where no one's gonna see it. Like I don't know the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no if you see it on the internet, you know it's true. Yeah. Exactly. And as we were talking about the wonders of Ghostface and ice cream. <laughs> Roberto suddenly yells out, Who is Ghostface Killer? I don't read Marvel. <laughs> this, this kid's good God. <laughs> Wu Tang is like the Super Friends. <laughs> Which would be this uh, season's version of All Puerto Rican, Rican Women Are Crazy. You know, you <laughs> thought you could escape. There's no, there is no there escape. There is no escape. Sherry, if I could blush, I would be blushing right now. <laughs> yes. But melanin prevents blushing. So <laughs> it's true. It's like a scientific fact. <laughs> <laughs> so I start reading Countdown at issue like 30. I never started. So I didn't either. What the, how bad did it get? Incredibly bad. It's like they kept taking characters like Mary Marvel. Mm -hmm. This day is bad. This day is good. She's good. She's bad. She's good. She's bad. Yeah, it's like... Oh, you mean hot Catholic school girl, Black Adam, Mary Marvel? It was totally watching yes. all these Catholics, Catholic, raised Catholic guys' weird fantasies being played out on the comics page in Which four colors. Bad. And we what was that God baby God. creature? What was the baby monster? Like the baby demon? What was that? Uh, Jack Kirby. The fighting uh, fetus Kirby. or something? I, the fighting fetus. The fighting <laughs> fetus? This the is problem. some old school Jack Kirby. I would totally read that. Oh my God. <laughs> the problem is basically say. I'm pretty sure it was an OMAC actually. If you compare that comic book with 52, 52, what I like about it is that it had an overall story arc. And you, you learned something. Yes, and the characters were built on, the characters were changed towards the end, and you really felt that you were reading something epic. And mm. the consequences of 52 still going on. Right. Countdown is like they went to a bar, they had two weeks until the next line, the next deadline, and they said, okay, bring a napkin, we're actually going to grind it down right here, and that's what it was. But which that, is another thing you could have Captain Adam turn evil and go to war with Which is another thing you could have bought with your $156 is a pretty damn good night in Adam's Morgan. Yay. Indeed. Yeah, man. Nice. And possibly more memorable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 156 bucks, <laughs> you might not remember anything. <laughs> which is still better than remembering exactly. Countdown. Exactly. <laughs> but it, it's really disappointing because it's it's Paul Dini. I mean... Yeah, but look who they had on 52, though. Grant Morrison, Greg Rucka, Mark Wade, and... That other guy. Jeff Jones. Jeff Thank Jones, you. That other guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jeff Jones. Guy. Paul Dini, while good, is not on that level. Because mm. they're bringing together four of the best comic creators of DC. They had Paul Dini and they had Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmiotti, who, while good, are not on that level. Right. So, you know, they're going with the B team from the very start. And it totally showed. Yes. You know, well, and the know. artist... Paul Dini writes a pretty damn good Batman. He writes, he writes a, a pretty good Batman. But Grant Morrison writes a really freaking good well, Batman. Well, I spent my money, my countdown money, I spent it on Vinyl Underground. There you go. Comic book. Which is extremely lovely. And, and isn't getting... And, and as I say, well, I call it... Uh, it's, it's what would happen if you took Constantine or Hellblazer and Hitman and poured them into a very cool hip flask. Yeah. And sprinkle the little invisibles on top. Yeah, yeah. And the sad part is, is With that sprinkles. Vinyl Underground is the kind of book that people, sh you know, people complain so much about this stuff. Oh, Countdown sucks, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, they still put down the three ninety nine like every week to buy it. Those the Battered Woman Syndrome. The Battered Woman Syndrome. <laughs> and books like the Vinyl Underground, which are ten times better, get a fraction of the sales. 
The, the masochism true. in the comics realm, masochism reigns. It's crazy. Which before, is why I'm reading Rick Remender's Adam. <laughs> before everybody thinks I'm sort of a monster, what I would do with that money is I would give it to something like Habitat for Humanity, which is a good thing Aww. basically to change Aww. mankind. Aww. Or if you sweet. actually have a local polit uh, political candidate in this political system that you like, give the money to them. You could have given that $156 to the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. That's true. Hey, or, or, to support, or to support Barack Obama. Or to Barack Obama. You know, plug, plug. Um, <laughs> or you could like support like a comic creator in need like Gil Kane or something like that. Yes. Especially. But instead... Oh, fan, serious. Okay, I thought you were... I'm, no, he's I'm dead yes. serious. Oh, th okay. That's, that's I'm, actually, I'm serious like Bill I want to No, that should be a topic for a future, uh, me uh, future uh, meetup because there's a lot of classic comic book artists basically who are struggling financially. And while okay. people are spending their money on crap like Countdown, these folks are suffering. Yes. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm serious right. like cancer. No, I'm sorry. That was my fault. But no, that's really cool. Yeah. You know what's really cool because, about um, this? George Perez, yeah. every time he does a convention uh, uh, visit, he uh, gets money for charity, specifically for retirement, for the retirement accounts of old yeah. uh, artists. Yeah. He's really cool about it. He basically does it very quietly. That's got to be the number one Way that, that you is the number spent one way you could have spent that money instead of spending it on countdown. countdown. I got to say that. Well, um, so we have about sixty seconds. So, any thoughts on Grant Morrison's final crisis? I uh, issue one. No, because I have no idea what's going on. Filler. Well, it has None. it has a truly phenomenal line in it, which is what was it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's so are, good we can't remember. That's how good Grant Morrison first, is. Well, it was long, but it was something about you are the first innocent victims of the blindingly obvious duo. Doctor uh, Doctor Light and Mirror Master. <laughs> Doctor Light. Doctor Light is basically hitting up Mirror Master for Viagra. That's kind of, that's Final Crisis one for you. You gotta love Grant Morrison. <laughs> Dude is cracked and whacked. And um, basically anything by Grant Morrison would be a better way to spend your money than on Countdown. Beyond All I know is that anything, anything that starts with Anthro and ends with Commandy. In the same issue. Book. Exactly. When they uh, meet up. And on I, that note, we're going to keep hashing this out and keep talking about Countdown because it's a lot of fun. And then we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Comic fans, how are you? This is Stella Maldonado, your Incan Princess, and I'm here at Victory Comics in Falls Church, Virginia. And today is free comic book day. So we're going to go ahead and check out the store and see who we can talk to. Josh Talley, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Awesome. Now tell us a little bit about Free Comic Book Day. Well, it's a day once a year that uh, the com all the comic companies, they get put together certain issues that they can hand out, and uh, we just have people come in and we give them free comics that we got, and uh, like there's some hero clicks and stuff, and uh, just here to have a good time. And you also have uh, free comic books for kids as well. Indeed, a full table full, actually, right behind and right over there. Uh. Awesome. We're talking to Pierre right now. Pierre, how are you? I'm good. What you doing? I am working on building a uh, War Machine uh, war game uh, model. Awesome. Okay, what's War Machine? War Machine is a miniatures combat game. It's kind of similar to Warhammer 40K or uh, Lord of the Rings or other similar miniatures games. Okay, awesome, awesome. So is this a bad guy, good guy? What's going on? Uh, I'm working on what is essentially the elves in the army. The war Machine is a very steampunkish uh, game where you have a warcaster who controls a giant bunch of uh, giant robots and the elves build myrmidons which looks something like that. Let's point this, uh, okay, awesome, very cool. So now, why are you building this though? Um, I'm uh, working on a new army, I'm working on the uh, Retribution of Scry is the name of the particular uh, group and I'm working on building a new uh, army for them. Awesome. So this is part of the game. These are the game pieces. Correct. That this is one of their uh, heavy uh, machine models. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the game then. How do you play the game and how is this guy essential to the game? Okay, um, the game is played with a bunch of um, D6. You're moving your models around on a battlefield, things like that. 
Um, this guy in particular is one of the heavy machines. He's one of your big hitters that your warcasters control your machines. Your, the game's over when you lose your warcaster. But you need your big machines to take down the opponent's warcasters and heavy machines. So this is the muscle right here. Yeah, this is the muscle characters. That I'm working on one of their big robots. And, you know, you roll dice to see if you hit things or not. You move around based on their speeds and their stats. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of fun. We are hanging out here with James Rambo. James, how are you? I'm fantastic. Cell, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Can, let's, can we just talk about for a second about your name, Rambo? Rambo, Rambo. It's a French name. It goes way back. Like really far back. I love your name, by the way. Thank you, Asela. I appreciate it. <laughs> and we I welcome you back. For my name. I thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about your position here in, at Victory. Um, you're the comic book guy. You're the one to go to. Tell us a little bit about that. I'm the comic book guy. I, when somebody comes in and asks for, you know, what's what's good, I'm, I'm the guy to talk to. Uh, Jeff Weaver, our owner, he's he's the older comic book guy. He's, he, you know, he's the back issues, the stuff from... The, the 30s up to about the mid 80s. Uh, I'm from about the mid 80s up to current. Um, so I recommend new series. I can, you know, I try to keep my, uh, keep a, a good idea of what's, what's good and what's interesting, um, what's worth picking up. And with comics nowadays, that covers a lot of ground. So I gotta, you know, be on the ball. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I, I do. We have the, the story here is divided into two sections. There's the gaming section and the, uh, and the comic section. I kind of run the comic section. Beautiful. So what can you recommend to our viewers of what's hot now? War, was it Last, Last Stand or New Krypton, uh, which is going to lead into a War of the Superman comic, uh, which is going to cover all these different Superman characters from different parallel dimensions. Um, honestly, I, we can't go wrong time. with a parallel yeah, dimension. Yeah. So yeah, that that's awesome. I can't wait to, to yeah. see that parallel dimensions. Parallel I'm all over it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's just, it's just the same stuff, but you know, better. Just little tweaks, little differences here and there. Exactly. It's like now, but not now, because exactly. it's now and another now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We're right here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? You I know, know exactly what, I mean? what you mean. Jeff Weaver, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I love your store. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So tell us a little bit about how you opened the store, why you opened the store, and uh, what motivated you. Yeah, uh, well, I was, I've always been a comic book collector since I was a kid. And uh, about 10 years ago, I got into the back issue business at conventions. And uh, one day I realized that there really wasn't a full-service comic and gaming store in the Falls Church region. So uh, we opened up this 3,500-square-foot uh, superstore, and uh, we're having a great time with it. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about the services that you provide here and all the different activities that you guys have here on a weekly basis. Sure, sure. Well, we have free, uh, free comic book days today. That's an annual event and uh, pretty exciting for all the fans here. Uh, Wednesday is new comic book day. We have a pull service, so we'll put people's books aside for them. Uh, we have in-store gaming. We have a lot of magic tournaments and other uh, events, hero clicks. Um, and, uh, you know, we're looking in the future to get some artists to come on in and uh, so the fans can meet them firsthand. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, well, I just wrapped up here at Victory Comics in Falls Church, Virginia, but Ulysses Campbell is out on the field also on Free Comic Book Day, so let's check in with him and see what he's doing. Yuli, where you at? What you doing? <laughs> well, so on this next segment, I think that we're going to do something we haven't done in a while, yeah. and it's uh, sorely missing, and I'm going to reach back here and... Am I worthy? You're worthy. Yes, you're worthy. So worthy. <laughs> That's only you are. Dun, and we're going to hand out some butt whoops. But since I have a job, I don't have any. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> no, I don't know. Kidding. I don't want to know. Hey, it's joking. my show. I feel offended here. Are you offended? <laughs> no. I'm like kidding. Puerto Rican women? So here's And ghost face. <laughs> There's a reason my, my girlfriend's not here today. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I don't have a job, but I don't have any butt whoops either. So, I'm going to hand the hammer off to my good friend PJ. All new right. to the show. It's good, it's good to be here. Well, uh, my butt whoop this week is uh, I'd like to take this Uru Mallet to the temple of Rick Remender. Rick Remender has, is writing two books right now. Uh, the End League and uh, The All New Adam. Both of which are terrible. <laughs> Awful. 
No, really I, tell me what you feel. <laughs> I, I read Inling and I was bored to tears. I read, uh, I read all, I read all new Adam. <laughs> all the all new, you have to, I have to go back. The all new Adam is one of the books that got me back into comic books after having been out of comic books for since '94. Was since that I was Gail a little Simone? Kid. Gail Simone. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I love this character. I love everything that Gail Simone did with it. And they brought Rick Remender on, and he completely gets the character wrong. Oh, oh yes. And it's just, it's an awful, like, he's taken, basically he's taken Ryan Choi and turned him into, like, Hank Pym. Don't. And it's just. That's it, not the guy you want to be It bugs like. me, it bugs me to know when that there's this Speaking character that I love <laughs> that I can't, that I just can't read at all. He killed Panda. He killed the, Panda. Yeah. Which one of the secondary characters that was one of the most popular secondary characters in the book. And for some weird reason, he wanted to make the book more gritty. So the first thing he did is kill that character, which is really stupid. Wow. Yeah. Mm, I have a butt whoop, actually. Go ahead. Pass it back. I, um, I want to send one out to my beloved Shulky. She Aww. Hulk. Aww. I don't know who you are anymore. Ever since you left the law, you're like completely. You, is she a scroll? Probably, I don't know probably. who this is. She's got no sense of humor. She's got no sense of humor. She's not litigious. And when you're being written by Peter David, you have no sense of humor. What does that say? I mean, that's just I bad. Know. That's weird. I Peter know. David has a good sense of humor. So so yeah, but she Hulk doesn't when Peter David writes her. Huh. I, it, it just, it's unrecognizable, and I'm not having a good time. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. so. We'll give you a hug after but, the show. But yeah. whoop to she Hulk, whom I love. I would like basically to give a butt whoop to the Wachowski brothers, I'm sorry, siblings, because <laughs> <laughs> I would pay good money for them to stay, stop making movies because I saw Speed Racer Whoa. and I think that caused brain damage. I, I know that <laughs> there's certain colors in the spectrum I cannot see anymore <laughs> thanks to them. <laughs> well, wait, but it was not a good movie, but it was fun. It I was had a good time. It it's was as much fun as being in a car crash and you realizing, hey, this is kind of fun. The car is flying. Woo! Plum. Now, hey, take. <laughs> now I agree. I agree that this movie was violently purple. <laughs> violently Wait, purple. How do you spell that sound effect? How do you spell plum? Plum. P L A M. Because that should just go up on screen yeah. right now. But any movie, any movie where a car, where Racer X's car flips over and he punches a driving Viking, a racing Viking in the oh, face. Oh, you're talking about is the car fool. Exactly. The car fool. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Car fool. We, yeah. 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 I love this movie on the same level I loved Snakes on a Plane. Do you know oh. why one of <laughs> I love Snakes on a Plane. Oh. You know why one of them is actually I think my heart stopped. Yes, it did. How? Snake it's venom. Snakes on a plane. What more do you need? <laughs> <laughs> it's self explanatory. Next thing you know, you're gonna tell me you like Deep Blue Sea. He did. He liked oh, it. Oh, come on. When man. Samuel L. Jackson gives that speech it and then gets no. eaten by the shark, that, was that is amazing. cinema gold. <laughs> gold. Pure gold. And we will now be handing out butt whoops to cast members. Hey, you, need, you need a hammer to the back of the head. What did I do this <laughs> before, time? But before we do that, I'm a great before, before I christen <laughs> my comrades with the hammer of, the hammer of Milnir, it's going to be me first, right? No. <laughs> before you <laughs> actually, yeah, let me run, fellow, man. Your fellow Hispanic, actually, I'm going to have to take it to the skull of William Adama. Hey! Um, and let it's me a passionate you why. man. Actually, we're going to have to take it to the whole command staff of the Battlestar Galactica because it goes like this. One week, and we're by the time y'all see this, we're gonna be a couple of episodes down the line, so this will be even funnier. Um, <laughs> one week, you have Starbuck taking the whole command staff on this crazy suicide mission to find a bunch of Cylons and then find the path to Earth that no one even freaking knows it's there except for you, Starbuck, because you're crazier than a bed bug. You end up getting poor Gata's leg, you know, <laughs> shot. <laughs> and, you know, you bring a bunch of Cylons into the middle of the fleet and nearly cause the end of humanity as we know it. Then you end up having that base star with President Roslin on, I might add, jump away. And, you know, everyone's wondering, what the hell happened? And the next week, you're captain of the air squad and no one gives a second thought about it. And you turn to Adama and you go, are you sure you're doing the right thing? You're acting pretty crazy. And no one thinks this is odd. <laughs> so to that, I got to give it up to Ron Moore and David Icke and everybody on that show, I love you to death. It's the greatest show on Earth, but continuity, man, it doesn't hurt. It can only help. So with that, 
Boom. <laughs> Point of order. I have absolutely squad douche to contribute to this conversation because <laughs> I don't watch this show. So I have no idea what you're talking about. What is a squad douche? Can I have him, please? Please. I'm going to hurt you. Hey. Hey. Do you want me to hold hey. him? Uh, okay. Clack. Okay. Okay, so occasionally we whip because we love, yes, much we like do. Roberto's analogy of earlier. Mm -hmm. And Ghost face killer! <laughs> Today, we would like to not only uh, but what because we love Tony Stark, but also buy him a beer. Yes, we would. Or Wait, isn't he an alcoholic? No, but he's yeah. a recovering alcoholic, and he's not. Every time he stopped drinking, he became a fascist, and that's not fun. <laughs> so, so that's why we want to get him liquored up. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's more fun that way. <laughs> because we all love our drunks. <laughs> they're funny, they're entertaining. I remember, kids, it's better to be an alcoholic than a fascist. Ask George Bush. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I agree, I agree with this particular butt whoop. Because my, Tony Stark is one of my favorite Marvel characters. He's probably oh, yeah. the character that got me into Marvel Comics uh, after, you know, watching the X-Men cartoon when I was a little kid. Without you know, a doubt. Come back, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the, fir the first mm -hmm. Marvel trade I bought after Infinity Gauntlet was uh, Armor Wars. Oh, yeah, and, that was uh, good stuff. Bought Armor Wars, bought Demon in a Bottle, bought Doom Quest. These are all fantastic stories about a, about a character who's really screwed up, mm -hmm. but he's trying to do the right thing. Right. And I think that this is actually a thread that if you watch Tony Stark through Civil War and through Secret Invasion, these things make, like, they, they almost make sense. Yeah. Well, let in, me in add a, something mm -hmm. to that. I want to also whoop because we love John Favreau. Yeah. For oh, yeah. making the most excellently awesome Iron Man movie. 100%. Oh, who knew? Awesome. I mean, who knew who that Marvel was going to release uh, an Iron Man movie that was going to be considered to be the best movie of the summer. So it was far. ocular orgasm. Yes, it was. Oh. <laughs> and not she in the same it. way she that Speed it. Racer was. <laughs> <laughs> no. It wasn't me. It, wasn't, it wasn't violently purple, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It was refreshingly golden, golden uh, red. Refreshingly Anything golden red. Anything that's got a stripper pole coming out of the bottom of an airplane With is him all holding right on by to Jim me. Rhodes. I got my a seven robot bucks right there. Jarvis. But I got to tell you, my absolute favorite scene in Iron Man is when um, Rhodey walks up to him in the desert. He saved him. Sorry, spoiler. You should have seen it. He you walks up have. to him in the desert and, and he asks Stark, how was the fun V? Yeah. And they kind of embrace and he says, next time you're riding with me. My favorite Aww. scene, though, yes. is also a Rhodey scene. It's when... You see him watch Iron Man fly out, and then you see him pan over, and there's the other suit of armor, and he looks—he oh, looks almost at the screen, almost like he's talking to us, and he says, "Next time, baby." Actually, oh, that was so that hot. Was, that was delicious. Yeah. My oh, favorite so scene has to be, and I know we have short time, has to be when Tony Stark sees the secondary character that was helping him build the armor mm -hmm. die, and realizes for the first time, "Damn, this guy actually died for me, and I'm not worth." That, that, that's the moment where he, the f switch flips over and he actually starts becoming more of a heroic character. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's the perfect balance of action mm -hmm. and drama. And I, I mean, I, I just, cried. It, it was I delicious. I mean, seriously, if I see John Favreau, I'm going to lick him. I, my apologies. To I'll, I'll, I'll basically climb to one of his legs and not let it go. So. I'm not going <laughs> to lick anybody and I didn't cry, but Iron Man is made of pure awesome. Just, yes, he so is. We're, just so I we're clear on that. I love Robert Downey Jr. You do. You I do. Him, I do. Yeah. Which one? And so Gwyneth weird. Paltrow's shoes can take your freaking eye out. <laughs> oh my God! For the ladies out there who like comic books and so fashion, pretty. those Gwyneth's heels will go through Christian your skull. Christian Louboutins uh -huh. were absolutely oh, uh, they they were like sex in the they city. Could, good. I'm amazed they didn't punch through steel when she was running in them. And, I mean, those and like so ah! I mean, there's nothing better to say. Iron Man, John Favreau, Christian Louboutin, all made of absolute awesome. One hundred. And that's the end of our show. Oh, wow. You know, on that. Yeah, it was a good show. Yes, and, it was. Um, we're very excited, as you can tell by my voice. So um, write us, please write us. We'd like to hear from you, and we look forward to seeing you back. Write Roberto here especially on <laughs> the DC. <laughs> I'll behave. <laughs> yes, love Roberto, but don't tell any Puerto Rican women what he said. No. <laughs> don't tell Ghostface. Or any either. women in or general. Ghostface. I mean, don't he's tell just Ghostface. An angry guy. <laughs> I'm yeah. not angry. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs>